And now we're in top eight. So this is top eight, and uh, I immediately get very sad. And the reason I immediately get very sad is because I am first place, and I get paired to the eighth place player who got in on breakers, and Zio Francone got in on breakers, and you know, very powerful wizard for sure. But they're playing bug. They're the only player in 24 players to play a Deathrite Shaman bug deck. Um, and I think bug is an atrocious matchup. I think that bug is really, really, really bad for our deck. They have Force of Vigor. They have Collector Oof. They have Wastelands. I, oh, I think this is just a terrible matchup. Uh, do I think my deck was a better choice than Peach deck? Yeah, I think I... All right. I'll be honest here. I think I had chose the best deck for the, for the tournament. If I look at this field, I think I'm favored versus most of these decks. Like, I don't think I'm favored versus Bug. Um, and I'm not, I'm not 100% sure if the... I think the Ravager and Eldrazi matchup might not be great because of uh, Revokers. Uh, but, like, Breach, uh, DPS... I, DBS and PO are closer, but like bre all these breach decks are like super good matchups. All of the bizarre decks are great matchups. I think Jeskai's a perfectly good matchup. I think that my so I went over it a little bit in the beginning, Canister, but um I wanted to play a Leyline of the Void main deck deck. And the, of the decks that uh you could choose, I came up with four. You have Ravager and Eldrazi, and I think they're like a tier two. And then uh you have um then you have like uh, Dredge with main deck Leyline, which is like a tier one. And then uh, this deck with main deck Leyline, which I think it's like another tier one choice. Um, and so I, I think I, I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think I chose, if not the best deck for the tournament, one of the best decks for the tournament. Um, I think that Dredge with Leyline was a perfectly good call for this tournament. Definitely something I would have advised. DPS is an interesting thought. Um... I'm not a super big DPS fan, but I do think that defense grid is quite good right now. And PO is on a, on a, you know, obviously a huge downswing. So you lost a lot of your main predators. I think DPS was a good call for this tournament, actually. Um, is it a better call than Golos with Leyline? Maybe. I don't know. DPS is Dark Petition Storm, yeah. So the cool part about DPS is defense grid. Defense grid is quite good against this field. Um... I think Duress is probably quite decent against this field. A big problem with DPS in this field is there is a lot of Eldrazi, and your 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 Eldrazi matchup is atrocious. So I think Fanoop is a little lucky to dodge the Eldrazi players. Also, DPS is also fair, like a little weak to uh, main deck Leyline as well. So yeah. Uh, is DPS better versus Breach than it is versus PO? I do think it's better versus Breach than it is versus PO, yes. Um, I do think that is the case. The, a, a problem is that DPS does have a hard time interacting with Breach's overpowered draws, like their, their early combo draws, but... Not to the extent where DPS like is horrible at interacting with PO's early draws, and PO has way more powerful early draws than um, than Breach does, right? PO is much more explosive deck than Breach. So overall, I don't think DPS was a bad choice for this tournament. I can see some of the logic there. I just don't think it was as good as our choices, but I don't know. I don't. Uh, it's kind of like splitting hairs. I think like as long as you're on one of the best decks and you play it well, I don't know. That's kind of how I. That's kind of how I view it. I do think that I would never have chosen DPS for this tournament. Uh, I was really honed in on playing Layla in the Void main, but I I like what I like what Pete did. I'm not gonna lie. I, I think it was. There was some definitely some thought in that, and I think it worked out. Obviously, it worked out very well for him. So, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I thought of it. All right. So, anyways, we'll go back to lamenting. I guess. Uh, this is round. This is the top eight. This is um, 
Top eight versus Zio Francone. I'm 5 0. Zio got in on breakers at 3 2. Zio is playing Bug, which I think is an atrocious matchup for me. It's got to be my single worst matchup in that entire field that I just showed you. I don't, I can't think of a deck that I'm worse against against these 24 players. I can't think of a single deck that I'm worse against. So I really, really am not, <laughs> not happy about this pairing, but I mean, that's, that's magic. It's, you know, you get, you get paired versus whoever. Uh, it could have easily been that I, I, I guess what I'm just concerned was like, was I supposed to lose my last round? So I had no chance of being paired versus my own, like in what in my mind is my own really, my only really bad matchup. And it's hard to say, right? Like, uh, Zio could have easily missed on breakers. Zio could have easily lost and not even been in contention. And then maybe I put myself in a worse spot versus the other decks or something. So I, I think it's probably not even worth thinking about. I think I just overthought of it because I was like too tilted after but uh so yeah i'm uh, i actually lose the die roll here because i don't know because magic online doesn't carry over your swiss record into the top eight to choose player or draw like a paper tournament would um i still don't like that very much i would like for there to be incentive to go xo in swiss but that's mostly i mean that's mostly just me complaining because i was xo in swiss right so Maybe not. Maybe maybe it doesn't matter. But either way, Zio's on the play. This is Bug versus Combo Shops. I think this matchup is quite bad. Uh, I'm looking to do early combo things and try to play around Wasteland as much as possible. I have the option to keep this hand. I don't think Leyline of the Void is very good versus their deck. It's not terrible because it turns off part of Deathrite Shaman and it turns off part of Tarmogoyf. So, like, there's definitely some upside but I don't think it's great. And if I was on the play, I might keep this hand so that I can go turn one chalice on one to turn off their death right shaman. However, on the draw, they're already going to play their death right shaman on turn one anyways. And I think this hand is just so slow. So I would rather just use the power of the London mulligan uh, just to try to find a better hand. So I mulligan this hand um, and I mulligan into this one, which is even worse it has no fast mana um it's gonna get eaten alive by a death right shaman like the chalice is kind of useless i don't even think spheres and thorns are good against bug i typically board them out versus bug um so i this hand's like uh not even close to keepable uh so we, we push this one back as well now we're on five cards maybe all right here's our five card hand our five card hand is not super good either we have another chalice hand uh where we have ley line i can like spyglass death right shaman which is not unreasonable uh i could spyglass wasteland theoretically which gives me some outs but yep yep five overs three two on the draw it's, that's that was what i was tilted about yesterday for sure but uh i mean i know the format structure going in so hard to hard to complain i guess Anyways, I keep this hand. Uh, this hand doesn't do very much. Like, I, I need to spike a, a Dark Depths or a Golos or something. Uh, I, I got to get kind of lucky. Opponent did mulligan to six, so there's something going for us. Here, I just slam a, a Spyglass off of my Ancient Tomb. Wait, what? Why'd I do that? I don't know why. Oh, I must have played around days. Sure. I don't know if I should play around days, but I played around days for the better or for worse. Um, theoretically, I could also go Lotus Spyglass Wasteland. And looking back, that's a pretty big misplay. I played around days, but I probably should not have. I might maybe I even win this game if I play better. Fuck. I feel like this is a huge misplay. So I want to keep Black Lotus so that I have Golos draws. That's the reason you want to keep Black Lotus. Uh, you also want to keep Black Lotus so you have Helm draws. So it's a little complicated, right? There's a lot of value in holding your Black Lotus. I, obviously, in hindsight here, Black Lotus Spyglass Wasteland looks better. But um, the problem is, Amir, is like we turn off so many of our live top decks by using our Lotus, right? We turn off the ability to Helm. We turn off the ability to Golos. We turn off like all of these like very, very good top decks. 
Uh, no. So we're spyglassing Deathrite Shaman. So you can't use Deathrite Shaman to make mana if you spyglass it. So if we had spyglassed Deathrite Shaman off of Lotus and strip mine the volcan uh, this tropical island, uh, we turn off their mana. Yeah. So so that's the that's where you have to you have to weigh the options, right? Uh, this could have also just been countered. It's possible that Zio would have forced this if we didn't play a land first, right? So it's kind of hard to say. It's definitely possible that this just gets this just gets forced, right? Like, uh, if I don't show a land and I, I threaten Wasteland Strip Mine, then they, maybe they have to force this Spyglass. So it's kind of hard to say it's a punt. It's definitely a different option that we could have taken, right? I, I, I like having this Lotus because it turns on eight top decks. Eight is a lot of top decks. Um, like, at any point in this game... The problem is they do have a force of will, right? So a top deck is kind of turned off, but you don't know that they have a force of will until after the spyglass resolves. So either way, um, you have two choices there, and I think both of them are fine. So we're going to move forward. Knowing opponent has a force and a Tarmogoyf. And so all I can think about here is, oh my God, please, please wasteland me. Please wasteland me. Of course, opponent does not wasteland me. They play a Tarmogoyf, which is just correct. While the Tarmogoyf is a 0-1 right now until they choose to wasteland me. Um, yeah. So I have a couple options here. I can go Thespian Stage, Activate Ancient Tomb, Copy Wasteland, or I can just strip mine their wasteland now, or I can strip mine their island now. So there's There are a couple choices here. Um, I considered strip mining island... However, if I strip mine their island and they strip mine my ancient tomb, I don't actually have the ability to play my top decks. Uh, I can't play the Golos. I can't play the Helm and activate Helm. Um, I, I thought that it was quite bad to lose my ancient tomb. So I strip mine their wasteland and I don't know how I feel about that. I think it, it's so hard to say. I didn't want to get Wastelanded here. It also, if I leave the Wasteland in play, it means that I can't draw Dark Depths as my out as well. Um, if I leave the Wasteland in play and I go stage next turn and then I draw Dark Depths, they they have me lo they have me answered. So I, I this isn't like Golos Prison where you're trying to restrict them. It's more you're trying to combo off and stop them from stopping you, right? So in my mind, I strip mine this Wasteland, which gives me even more outs. Now I can top deck Dark Depths. Uh, and I can top deck Golos, and I can top deck Helm. Obviously, they have a Force of Will for Golos and Helm, so by strip mining Wasteland, I can then unlock my Dark Depths out. That's my that's my reasoning. I think the reasoning makes sense. So I just strip mine this Wasteland, turning off their ability to stop a Dark Depths uh, stop stop Dark Depths combo. Uh, yes, and I have a lot of time right now uh, because this Tarmogoyf is only a one two due, due to Leyland of the Void. And so here's um, an interesting thing. Do you run this sphere of resistance into force? The problem with running the sphere of resistance into force is if they choose the force of will, uh, it grows the Tarmogoyf, and I take two damage and increase the clock. I don't know. Uh, the sphere doesn't stop force of will because they already have another land. <sighs> Yeah, I could have, I, yes, I could have done that too, but that is going to, if I copy my strip mine with stage, then they have, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know about that one. I'm pretty sure I choose not to run it out, because I don't want to give them extra clock for no reason. Uh, I think I instantly get punished for not doing that, but let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure they instantly top deck like Ancestral Recall or something. Yeah, they top deck brainstorm. So maybe I'm just supposed to cast the sphere of resistance and take an extra four damage. The clock gets really fast if I do that. So I go to 13 and then they have a clock of still five turns, which is not terrible, but I probably was supposed to play sphere of resistance, but it's hard to say. They don't actually have that many like 
the biggest problem is they don't actually have that many one drops in their deck that I care about countering. Like, I don't really care about stopping Death Rite from resolving. They don't have four preordain in their deck, unless they do. I, I don't know if they have four preordain, but most bug decks don't have four preordain, so I don't know. Of course, their brainstorm did hit a fetch land, which is like obviously the nuts. I I, I think not playing it is probably slightly better, but not great. Here I do here I do play it. So what I do here is I I bait the force with the the sphere resistance. I do it off of stage so I don't take any damage. I beat the force, and I'm like, this is it. I've won the game. I've done the winning of the game. They're going to force this with... Yep, they force a negation. They pitch misstep. All right, so they just have to not have top deck two blue spells. And I slam my Golos, and of course they have top decked two blue spells and a fetch land. So, uh, yeah. Pretty rough for me. I might have been fine if I had, eh, probably not. Even if I had played Sphere on the last turn, they would have forced it and still done the same play, so. Yeah, opponent, like, had the best cards they could have possibly had there, so. Unfortunate, unfortunate. I guess not the best, best, because they could have had, like, a Collector Roof or something. Well, a Collector Roof doesn't actually do anything on this current board. Well, I would have stopped this. Yeah, so, Collector Roof would probably be better, but some of the best cards anyways, so. Opponent could not have hit Tomb with Waste. They played Tarmogoyf that turn. They definitely were supposed to play Tarmogoyf that turn instead of hitting Tomb with Waste. I don't. I disagree with that statement. So here I have to draw uh, Dark Depths, and I still can draw Dark Depths and win. Opponent is tapped out. If I draw Dark Depths, I win. Uh, but I don't. I don't draw Dark Depths. I drew Spyglass. I think I Spyglass. I named Wasteland so that if I if they drew a Wasteland and I drew a Dark Depths, then I could still uh, go through it. And so I have one more top deck to draw uh, a, a Dark Depths, and I don't draw Dark Depths. So, um, kind of a frustrating game. Multi 5 was on the draw versus a 3-2. They had the exact counters. I have a couple choices I could have made in that game that might have made the game different. But even in hindsight, I think that all of the choices made a lot of sense and gave myself the highest percentage chance to have an out. No, no, at this point, I couldn't draw Depths anymore because it costs two life and I would die to the Death Rite Shaman. Yeah, at this point, I can't draw Depths. I had to draw Depths last turn. You're totally right. Anyways, uh, then I die to the Swings. So I, I, I think in general, like, there were, what, two or three choices in that game? And I think I made the right choices and I just think it didn't work out. Uh, though it's possible, like, if I had played the Sphere and into the Force, then... Maybe we would have gotten out of it, but they still would have cast Brainstorm at the end of... Maybe they would have, like, uh, held... I guess they would have just held the Brainstorm on the Force of Will, and I would have... That would have been bad, too. So I guess... I don't I don't even think there's any way I could have... Even if I took the other lines, I don't think I'd get out of it, so... Nothing crazy in there that I would be mad about. Let's go check out Game 2. Uh, we don't know for sure, Tree. It's possible that they wouldn't have had a blue spell. No, they had to have had a blue spell. It's not, it's not, it's not true. They, they didn't have to have had a blue spell because they brainstormed and found a fetch. It's possible. It's possible. I think it's fairly unlikely, but it's possible. I think they had a mental misstep. I'm not sure. I think it's very likely they had a mental misstep, but hard to say. All right, so now we get to be on the play. Uh, feel slightly better about that. Our seven card hand is not very good. Oh, I, I think the prison route is pretty bad. I don't actually keep in spheres and uh, thorns and stuff against them. So I board out uh, four sphere, one spyglass, one thorn. I kept in chalice and trinisphere on the play uh and then i boarded in worm coils and crucible of worlds um so that's well that's how i boarded for this matchup and then i have this hand which if i had a workshop i would just snap it off and just slam an engine and hope it works um yeah it's possible it's possible also, yeah, so I think, like, the two different changes I could make were like, casting Sphere, 
or going for the crack lotus to play um spyglass lines and we don't know how those would have worked out but those were choices and i think they both had some merit but i don't think they were choices that i would make so kind of hard to say this hand just doesn't do anything these cards are dead um i can't play the worm coil so you just have to, you have to mulligan this hand it's just a non-functional hand you do get a lot of hands like that where you're playing like these crazy combo pieces and they don't combo with each other and then you look like a silly silly goose for having them in your deck but uh, that comes with the power level of the deck, right? This hand is some more of the same. You have mirrors that don't do anything. You have helm that doesn't do anything. You have crucible that doesn't do anything. You have to mulligan again. And of course, I signed up for that. We did a lot of mulliganing to five in this tournament, and we ended up 5-0 in the Swiss. So that's just like how the deck works. You have to make a lot of decisions in the mulliganing phase to uh, to choose like you know how you want to play the game. So this hand is, I think, actually pretty reasonable. Um, I've got a lot of fast mana. I have a lot of really good threats in the matchup. I have the ability to kill a collector oof. So um, I think this hand is actually probably the best hand of all the hands we've had by like a decent amount. I think I choose to pitch the Mirage Mirror and the Dismember. And the reason I choose to do that is because I can play turn two Golos. And I, I just want to try to be able to beat Force of Will, basically. And to beat Force of Will, I think I need to have two threats. And because I have a blast zone, I do have the ability to kill a collector oof theoretically. So I think I don't want the dismember. So I think I just put the the Mirage Mirror and the Dismember away, and I'm gonna go for the big artifact beatdown threat plan. Uh opponent kept seven. I lead with Blast Zone Go. Uh don't want to take any extra damage off my mana crypt if I don't have to. Theoretically, this was a mistake. I could have gone mana crypt, blast zone, make it to two. I could have done that. I could have done that. So this may be a mistake. It's a little hard to say. Um, theoretically, like maybe I want to cast this blast on a one to kill Deathrite Shaman, but probably not. So I could have risked an extra three damage to put a second counter on this blast zone. And I think I probably should have. Let's be honest here. I think this is probably a mistake. Um, I didn't think about it at the time. And I definitely think looking back, I would definitely want to just put this to two. Really, uh, yeah, I don't like this. I, I think this is a misplay. I didn't even think about it, I don't think, at the time. I think I thought the Blast Zone was entering tapped, and it didn't enter tapped. I don't know. I don't know. I have actually haven't played with Blast Zone very much, so that's probably my own fault for just not getting enough reps in with the card. But I think this is a misplay. I think I'm willing to take three damage to do that, so here's a definitely, I think, a punt. I think that's a punt. So opponent obviously has turn one Deathrite Shaman because they're a bug deck. And this is actually not like, I don't feel too bad about where I'm at right now. Um, I have six mana, so I can play Golos and Worm Coil. Uh, obviously I don't have six mana right away. I have five, so I can go one, two, three, four, five, play a Golos. Golos resolves, I'm super happy. I'm pretty sure I just get a Dark Depths because I have an active stage. Um, they actually are basically forced to have a Wasteland or an Assassin's Trophy right away to stop me from getting a 2020. I'm like, wow, yeah, this is actually a pretty good game. This is going pretty well. Um, so I just get, I get a Dark Depths, which is going to force them if they have a Wasteland to use their Wasteland now. Well, not, I mean, they're not forced to use their Wasteland now, but theoretically they can. Let's let's see what ends up happening. I'm pretty sure they have the wasteland and they have a collector oof. So they wasteland the dark depths and they just slam a collector oof, which turns off my my mana crypt. So uh yeah, I I looks like I punted this game. If I had just played my mana crypt on turn one, I bet I win this game. Well, I lose my blast zone, so that means I'm farther away from Worm Coil. But this turn I would have just blown up their collector oof. Yeah, I think I really fucked this game up by just not playing my Mana Crypt on turn one. All right, that's good to know. That's good to know. Because now I have to pay two life to put a counter on my Blast Zone. And the biggest problem is they can now Assassin's Trophy my Blast Zone. I mean, they have to have Assassin's Trophy, but... 
come on it's 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 franco yeah he always has it <laughs> uh and so i put my counter on this blast zone looking to kill the collector roof on the next turn um and, and i get assassin's trophy i don't have a waste or any kind of basic in my deck i could play a basic swamp in my sideboard if i wanted to but i don't think bug is a big enough metagame player to do that Uh, yeah. So I do top deck this fucking workshop, which, which is lit, by the way. Fairly good, fairly good. So, <laughs> uh, wait, why the hell did I not slam workshop? Oh, I'm one mana short, sorry. No, I'm not one mana short. Why did I play workshop? What? What was I doing? Why didn't I slam workshop? Am I missing something here? Why the hell did I not slam workshop? What am I missing? Is this actually a workshop? I I remember this being an ancient tomb. Oh, it's really bad. I don't have I I remember this being an ancient tomb. I don't think this was a workshop. I think the replay is bugged. This is an ancient tomb. Because I remember going through my head all the cards that I could get that would draw me into a worm coil engine. This is an ancient tomb. Is this this replay is bugged? No, this replay is 100% bugged. This this should be an ancient tomb. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I know that sounds sus. I, I actually, I'm, uh, I don't have a replay to confirm it, but I'm like very sure this was an ancient tomb because I remember, I remember thinking to myself, should I copy this thespian state? Wait, th I remember thinking, should I copy this thespian stage? to become an ancient tomb so that I could play my worm coil on the next turn. But then I drew an ancient tomb, so I didn't need to copy it. I don't remember this being a workshop. Obviously, if this was actually a workshop, we should have just slammed worm coil engine. That's true. We can, we can, we can check the life total after we cast worm coil engine. Let's find out. Let's find out. I, I don't remember drawing a, a workshop here, so. So here, yeah, so I, I remember thinking here. Am I, sp wait, this, what is the hell is this? Because I remember, I don't even remember having a land in my hand. Maybe I just had a workshop and I just, I just blanked out. I think I draw an ancient tomb. So maybe I just had a workshop and just didn't realize I had a workshop. It's possible. Because I think I think about activating my thespian stage on my ancient tomb so that I can draw another one mana thing. No, because we played a thespian stage last turn. No, I think I just don't remember having this card. I draw an ancient tomb here. I draw an ancient tomb. No, the, the card I draw on this turn is ancient tomb. I just don't remember ever drawing a workshop. Wait, what? What? Chat? 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 All right, hold, 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 hold up. Hold, so, something's wrong here. Let's see what happens when this 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 Mishra's workshop goes into play. Hold up, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's still a Mishra's workshop. No, that's a Mishra's workshop. What is going on? No, I'm tapping seven. What's happening? Is it broken? I can't, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I think, I think it's broken. I'm stuck. Well, the game ended. 
what all right hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. let's 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 go back and watch this again <laughs> I remember getting my worm coil engine force of will casting it off of two ancient tombs. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get to the bottom of this. Maybe we won't get to the bottom of this if it's just bugged twice. Alright, 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 alright. This is the same, this is the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I I did punt this game, though. I did punt this game by not uh, killing the collector roof. I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, but it, it was a misplay, for sure. All right, chat. All right, chat. What did I draw here? Oh, it's a Mishra's Workshop again. Uh, I think it's just bugged because I, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense because then I tap seven and then the game bugs out and I concede. But I know for a fact that this got force of willed. All right. I guess we have no choice. All right. Yeah. All right. So I don't know what I top decked. I don't know what this card is. I have no idea what this card is supposed to be. I do know that this card is supposed to be an ancient tomb. And so I definitely believe that I went Ancient Tomb, Ancient Tomb, Thespian Stage, Thespian Stage, Cast Worm Coil Engine. It got Force of Willed. And then... Because this game goes on for like two more turns where they attack with a 4-5 Tarmogoyf. All right, I guess the replay is just like dummy bugged. Because I believe I die to like Deathrite Shaman activations or something insane. My deck that plays no instance or sorcery is like, I'm pretty sure they eat uh, Assassin's Trophy and eat Force of Will and kill me or something. I don't know. Uh, I do know that I wish I had a Blast, uh, blast Zone on two. Blast Zone did look good here. It just, they had all the answers. So, yeah, Zeo had all the answers. Um, I made a misplay, but I don't know if it would have changed anything. And this replay is hella bugged. <laughs> And so then I lose. Yeah. Um, so 5-0 five, five oh Swiss. Quick loss in the top eight. Overall, uh, let's think about this. Overall, uh, is it all workshops? I can't. It just breaks. It just breaks. I can't. I can't you can't draw a card. <laughs> Overall, uh, looking back on this tournament, I am very happy with both my preparation and my deck choice. I thought... <laughs> I thought we picked a really good deck for this tournament. I was happy to play a deck pretty competently that wasn't PO. Um, that's always my concern is like, am I going to be able to pilot a deck well if it's not PO? Um, so overall, in terms of pre-tournament work, uh, obviously we hit like a uh, very high uh, uh, predictions on what opponents were going to be playing. 20 out of 24 is is fantastic. And then I think we we picked a pretty good choice for the tournament. Uh, I think I think overall my play from what we've seen in the replays was good. Um, they were definitely what we had like two or three things that I said were mistakes, and then uh, a couple different places where you could take divergent play patterns that I don't know if I would. I think like there was merit to some divergent play patterns. Like clearly the the trying to play around Hercules Recall was a good idea versus Fanu, but it wasn't a correct play because we actually didn't have a way to play around Hercules Recall, even though I thought I did. So that was a mistake. Um, gave my opponent an extra draw or two. Um, but in general, I think we played like I actually think we played cleaner than the mocks that we uh, qualifier that we won last season. When we went over the Mox Qualifier last season, I was kind of disgusted with <laughs> how I played besides like maybe one match or something like that. So overall, yeah, pretty happy. Moving forward with this deck, I think it's in a good spot. Um, I think this is a deck you can play in a wide metagame tournament. I think this is a deck that's very strong. Um, no, 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 no. You're, you're misunderstanding, Mason. Golos stacks. Golos, the prison deck is a terrible deck. No one should register Golos Stacks slash Golos Prison. That's a very different deck than this deck. This deck is um a combo shops deck. It does also play Golos because Golos itself is a very strong card, um, but it has a very different philosophy on how to win and close out games. So, um, 
Yeah, I actually think we played better than last season's qualifier, but it just didn't work out. So, um, clear, clearly not, clearly not based on that bug replay. So, yeah, um, I there's some different ways you can build this. I know that Slasher just top aided a tournament with it. Um, had like Carns and random time vaults and stuff that I don't really like. Um, there the the card that I'm most close to cutting in the main deck is a Mirage Mirror. I think the fourth Mirage Mirror is kind of garbage, but I don't even know what I want instead, so I haven't really found anything that I would really want to trade out for it. So, in general, I think this deck is really good. I probably will continue to play it. Um, I probably won't play it super often because I'm going to try to play like fun things on stream um, with there not being any stakes for a little while. So I'm definitely going to try to find some some interesting things to play for, for chat. Um, but yeah. If anyone has any follow-up questions on the tournament or this deck, uh, now's a great time before we wrap it up and maybe play a league or something. 